Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 10 for the RPG Basics video series. Today we're going to start, uh, we're going to add in some attacking into our game. It's going to be basic, so f uh, let me get my controller here. It's going to be pretty basic, just a basic attack for our character in each direction like this. Uh, we'll get a basic attack state. It won't actually hit the enemies yet. We'll be adding that in in the next part of the video. But there's some things I want to talk about in this one that need to get set up first um, for kind of preparation for the next couple of videos. So that's what we're going to be doing. I also wanted to mention real quick that my Udemy course, which is doing really well, and I just wanted to thank you guys for all your support. Uh, it's because of that Udemy course that I can continue to do free videos like this one and free series like this one because the Udemy course is what helps to pay my bills. So, uh, because YouTube ad revenue doesn't for sure. So, the, I just wanted to thank you guys. And as a special thanks, I'm doing it on a sale right now. So, if you want to check that out, you can check out the link uh, right above my head here, which is my website. And I'm selling my Udemy course for 92% off, which is $10 instead of $120, basically. So, it's a really, really good deal if that's something you've been interested in. I'm doing this also because I know some of you have to deal with currency conversions, and sometimes it costs a little extra by the time it gets converted into your currency and stuff. So doing it so cheap like that is helpful to you guys. And uh, I don't know how long the sale is gonna last. It might just be till the end of this week. So it might just be a few more days where I'm gonna leave it up there. But I did wanna tell you guys about it just in case that was something that you were interested in. So let's get back started into the free content, uh, which is also quite nice if I do say so myself. And what we're going to do now is, first thing we need to do is in, in the description, there's going to be a link to some more sprites because you guys need the animations. So we're going to create a new sprite. We're going to call this sprite player <coughs> attack down. We're going to load the sprite and we're going to go, um, you guys are going to go to wherever you downloaded the file to. I'm going to go into... Hmm, I think that was the wrong the wrong folder. I'm going to go into here and grab sprite player attack down right there. Should open it up. Now, uh, we need to make sure that the origin of this character right here matches the origin on our down character right here. And you can see uh, that it's going to be different because if we just center this right here, then they're not going to match up. The origin is going to be down at this guy's feet while up here it's up closer to his head. And so that's going to give us issues. So what we're, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, we can leave the X coordinate centered because that's correct. But for the Y coordinate, we're going to need to make it the same as this one over here. So we're going to do 10. And you can see now they match up correctly. Um, the origins are in the same spot on the little character guy. Okay, now we're going to create another sprite, call this sprite, player, attack, right. We're going to load a sprite, and we're going to get the attack right. Strip, right there. And for this one, um, we can center it as well, but you can see that messes up the origin. So what we need to do is leave the Y position the same, but change the X position to 7 as well so that they match up like this. Our sprites need to match up. What will happen is if, if you don't match up the origins, when we switch to the attacking sprite, the character will jump kind of funny and it'll look weird. So we need to make sure that the origins match up. Let's create a new sprite. Sprite, player, attack, left. These attack animations aren't the greatest in the world, but they don't look bad. They're decent little animations. Um, open that one up. This one's going to be the hardest because um, to get this one to match up, uh, we need to know how far to put the Y to make sure that matches up here. Or the X position, sorry. And I think 31 was... No, that's not right. 28... 28 looks good. 
I'm just looking at these two to see if they match up. I think 28 is good. Okay, so now we've got the left. Let's get the up. So, sprite. Sprite. Player. Attack. Up. Let's load this sprite. And sprite. Player. Attack. Up right there. Center the origin, but for the Y, I think this Y was 31. Let's look. Player up. Yeah, the Y should be set to 31. That should give us a pretty close match on our origins here. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, one thing that's good to do with your project is it's really good to make sure and uh, keep your resource tree organized. So we're going to insert a group right here. We're going to call this player player sprites. Well, we can just call it player because it's inside of the inside of the sprites folder anyways. So we're going to drag each of our sprites into this folder and game maker can be a little bit fiddly when you're trying to drag sprites into it. Um, it's kind of annoying, but hopefully they'll get that fixed. We can drag in the player shadow as well. If I can get it in, there we go. And then we'll drag in all of our attacking sprites like this and then we've got a nice folder there that we can expand because we're getting a lot of player sprites we might not want to see them all the time just useful to do that so now what we're going to do is we need to modify our get input script here so that we can get input for an attack button so we're going to add a new variable here called attack key and it's going to be equal to, um, I'm just going to copy this right here. And I'm going to change it to X instead of C. Okay. And then I'm going to copy uh, this down here th for the dash key on the controller. I'm going to change this to attack key. Attack key. And then I'm going to do, I think it's GP face 4 is for the X button. No, it's three, apparently. Okay. You can see I just middle click to open up the documentation. GP face three is the X button on an Xbox controller. So I'm going to do three there. Okay. So now we're at least getting the correct input for our attack, but we need to have an attack state. So let's create a new script here. We're going to call this script attack state. And in this state, this is where we're going to run our attack code. For now, we just needed to change to the correct um, attacking sprite and set it to the correct animation speed. So we'll do animation speed first. We'll do image speed equals 0.5. That seems to work pretty good. You guys can mess around with that if you want to try something a little different. So we've got 0.5 for the image speed. Now... <coughs> How are we going to do the attack? Because we've got four different attacking animations and we don't know which one we need to use. Because we need to know which way the character is facing. So one way we could do this is we could do if sprite index is equal to sprite player right sprite index equals sprite player attack right okay and then we do the same thing with each different direction if sprite index is equal to sprite player down or left I guess sprite index is equal to sprite player attack left Okay, um, we can do it this way and this will work. So there's nothing wrong. In fact, if you wanted to finish and do a mini challenge, you could finish it this way. But I'm going to teach you guys about something called a switch statement. And the reason I'm teaching you this is because they're common in other programming languages, not just in game maker language. So if you ever learn another programming language, you'll see these come up and they can make stuff like this a little bit easier. So what a switch statement is, is you do switch, switch, and then <coughs> you give it a value or a variable. So we're going to do image index, right? You give it some brackets like this. 
So it says, what is the value of image index? And then you have different cases, depending on what the value of image index is. So you could do case, sprite, or sprite, player, down. And then you do uh, a colon there. So we've got, what is the value of image index? Right here, right? What is the value of image index? If the value of image index is equal to sprite player down, then we do something right here. So do something, right? And then we have what's called a break, break, which just breaks out of the switch statement. It says we found what we needed to do and we did it and we, we can leave this switch statement now. Okay, so it's got a little bit of a funny syntax here and syntax is just kind of like the grammar of the, of, of this, how your code looks. It's got a little bit of a funny syntax here. Um, and we can have other cases, right? Case, sprite, player, up, break, case, you know, and have each different case. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it what to do. Sprite index equals sprite player attack down break. So if we are in the down sprite switch to the attack down sprite right now let's do the up real quick sprite index equals sprite player attack up oh I didn't spell that right we're gonna want to fix that real quick um, up there we go should be fixed now Okay, so now we're gonna do a mini, a mini chat, mini challenge. I'm gonna, or you can pause the video right now and go do the other two cases for the switch statement, and uh, then I'll see you in a minute and we'll do it together if you have any troubles with it. So pause the video now. Okay, great job. Let's do it together. Um, just in case you had any issues with it, we're gonna do case sprite player right. So if we're in the right case, sprite index equals sprite player attack right break case sprite player left S colon not a semicolon just a normal colon sprite index equals sprite player attack left break. Okay, let's run the game and see what happens. Okay. So now that we've got our attack state in, we should be able to press the X key. Um, it's not working. Oh, it's because we're not actually switching to the state. So in our move state, we need to we need to basically copy something similar to what our dash state does right so if attack key okay you'll want to set your image index equal to zero image index equals zero now why is that well that's because we're going to switch to the attacking sprite but let's say our character is running and he's on frame two of his run animation and we switch to the attacking sprite if we don't set the image index to zero his attacking animation will start on frame two. So we'll skip the first few frames. It will look really weird. So you need to make sure you set the attack animation to frame zero when we switch states right here. So then we'll do state equals script attack state. Okay, and don't put the parentheses after it because that will call the script and not set it to the state. <clears throat> really, really easy mistake to make. I made it the other day when I was working on grain war, I think. So, okay. So now we should be able to dash and attack. Except the attack state isn't working. Script attack state. Case sprite equals sprite player right. Sprite index equals sprite player attack right.
what's going on here? We didn't change into our attacking right sprite unless I loaded in the no, that's the attacking right image. So, oh, it's because I did up here. You can see I did image index. Okay, so it's checking to see if the image index is equal to the sprite player down. Well, image index is the current animation frame we're on. It's not the current sprite we're on. So that doesn't make any sense. So that was my bad. It was a typo. What we need to do is change this to sprite index right there. Because we need to check, and some of you probably noticed that you were laughing at me. You're like, oh, Ben, you switched those. Okay, now we should be able to attack. And you can see we do. But we get stuck in the attack animation and we never stop attacking, right? So we need a way to stop attacking once our character has finished his animation. There's a really cool event for that inside of GameMaker. Go into your player object. <clears throat> Go to add event, other, animation end. So, so there's an event called an animation end, and this event fires when an animation finishes and reaches its end, which is kind of obvious. Let's drag over a code action, and we're going to do change back to move state, okay, in this code action. We're going to say if state equals script attack state. So if we're in the attack state, and the animation ends, right? If we're in the attack state and the animation ends, state equals script move state. So now we should carry out the attack. At the end of the attack, we should switch back to our move state. So let's see how this works. We can dash around, we can attack, and switch back to the move state. Now you're going to notice a few things probably because you guys are smart. And that is sometimes it feels like you should attack down but you attack sideways because it only it it seems that unless we're going exactly straight down like look at this I can almost move down without actually my character moving down like that right there and the reason that is is because of the way that we've set up the animations for the sprite so in the next video well in the next video we're gonna talk about how we can make the character actually hit these enemies when he attacks, add some knockback to the enemies. I'm going to show you guys how I do that in Grain War, basically. It's going to be just like the way I do it in Grain War. And uh, we'll get that set up. But after that, we're going to fix our animation code and our sprite changing code. We're going to learn about something called arrays and 2D arrays. So we're going to be learning some new programming terms and some really cool stuff in the next couple of videos. So I'm excited to show you guys those. But thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something. Um, if you did, be sure and like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. That always really helps me. And then, like I said, my Udemy course is... A lot of people have said, I couldn't wait for your next video, so I went and got your Udemy course. <laughs> That's funny. So uh, if, if you're one of those people that just can't wait, you can go check out my Udemy course. It's a really, really good course. Um, and it's on sale for 10 bucks right now. So go check it out. Anyways, thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you guys later.